right, at this point, let's get everything turned on. Turn on the projector, the computer, and make sure that the projector lens is open and the zoom is set to T. Okay, so first, you need to unbox this. Importantly, this dongle you will need. Do not lose it. Take it out. All right, plug this into the computer. Batteries will be included. Dongle into computer. Batteries into mouse and keyboard. All right, so the first thing we want to do is grab the remote control for the projector. We are going to go into the menu, settings, keystone, the horizontal vertical keystone, and we want to make sure that these are set at zero. So we're going to use the arrow keys to set it at zero and zero, and we want to turn the automatic keystone correction off. Then we can hit escape. And the projector is set. Now, if we look at the box, it does not have light touching the front wall, but it's spilling over on the back wall. So we are going to adjust the projector until that's taken care of. All right, at this point, we are reaching up and manually adjusting the fit of the projector with the screws in the spider mount slightly loosened. Once you see light filling all four walls of the box, you should be ready to tighten down the screws. So at this point, you're going to tighten the screws that affix to both the projector and the base of the spider mount. You will notice that the projector is adjusted almost all the way to the top of the spider mount. And this is generally what you will need to do to make the light fill the box. All right, so first off, the icons are off the screen. So I'm gonna select the big area here with my mouse. I'm going to move the mouse over until I see that it's touching that icon on the rail there. And I'm just gonna pull these over here and now we have the icons where we can see them. We're going to open up Sandbox Tools and double click on getcalib.sh and then we will select Run in Terminal. We're going to type in the password which is capital S A N D T A B L E 1. Hit enter and it's going to grab the calibration and go away. The next step is to open up the Raw Connect Viewer by double clicking on it and clicking Run in Terminal. So now we have the normal camera on the right here and the 3D camera on the left. And as you can see, the 3D camera is not taking picture of the entire interior of the box. We're, we're a little off to the left here. So I am going to use my Allen wrenches to loosen up the connections, slide it over and tighten it up when I get it centered on the box. At this point, you will need to loosen the arm that holds the connect sensor and manually slide the arm and the sensor around until the sensor image captures all edges of the box. Once you get all of the sides of the box captured with the sensor, you will re-tighten down all the screws with the Allen wrench. All right, so I have the 3D image centered. You can see we got a little extra showing on the left-hand side, but it's very close, and the important thing is that it can see the entire box. So now that we have that, we're done using the mouse buttons. From this point on, we're going to be using the keyboard. For instance, I want to move the image over. I'm going to hold the Z key down 
and then I can adjust the image to the center. Release the Z key, it'll stay there. Now I can expand the image where the 3D image is taking up most of the box. This is just going to make it easier for us to do fine adjustments from here. So we have the image expanded in the center. I'm going to right click on the mouse. Even though I said we weren't going to use the mouse buttons in, I guess we have one more. So we right click on the mouse and we select average frames. This is going to freeze the image with an average number of frames so that things aren't changing while we're trying to, to, to make these next measurements. The first thing we're going to do to take the measurements is we are going to hold down the one key and we are going to select extract planes on the menu. So I'm holding the one key down and I'm moving the mouse around till I have extract plane selected. Now I'm releasing the one key. So now the one key is assigned to that function. We are going to bring the mouse pointer up to the upper left portion of the screen. We don't want to be in these dark areas. We want to be out here where it's representing the flat bottom of the table because that's what we're trying to do right now is, is see what the plane of the bottom of the table looks like. So I'm well away from the corner. I'm going to push the one key down and I'm going to hold it down. And as I move the mouse, you can see a small box comes out with the mouse. We're going to move it down to the lower right corner. The same thing, we aren't going to get that close to the corner because all we're looking for is to get a sample of the flat spot at the bottom. I release the mouse and it has taken the measurement for us. The next step is to measure the corners. And for this, I am going to use the two key. So I am going to press and hold the two key down. I'm going to go on the menu to measure 3D positions, and then I will release the two key. Now the two key is assigned to measuring the 3D positions. And what we want to know is where the corners of the box are. So I'm going to come down starting at the lower left corner. I want to be away from the shaded regions, somewhere in that area, and then I simply press the two key and let up. That's measured that corner. I now do the same thing on the lower right corner. The mouse in about the right position, press the two key, release it. We have that corner measure. Next is the upper left. Two key, release, measured. And the upper right, two key, release, measured. We're now done with the raw connect viewer. So I can push the escape key and it'll go away, leaving the box open that took all the measurements. We'll then bring the mouse to the, uh, just to the left of the open paren, and we're going to select all the way down using the middle, or I'm sorry, the, the left mouse button, and we will release the left mouse button, and now we have this text selected, which is the measurements we just made. Go to the edit menu, select copy, and now we can go to the sandbox tools folder again. We're gonna open the box layout text by double clicking on number three, link to box layout that text. And this time we're going to select display. And this should bring up the box layout text file with the default measurements in it, which do not apply to this table. Select and delete those. And now we can simply paste the new measurements in. There's one extra step in here. This equal sign needs to be deleted and replaced with a comma. The Negative 118.262 is the distance in centimeters from the camera to the bottom of the table. And this is going to be where sea level is going to be interpreted by the camera. And we would like sea level to be slightly higher than the bottom of the table since we want to have 
be able to dig through the green and get the blue colors below. So we're going to change this by five centimeters. So I'm going to delete that eight and turn it to a three. And now this file is complete. We can click on save and then close it with the X in the upper right hand corner. So we now have the box layout configured so the camera knows where the bottom of the table is and it knows what level is to the table and it also knows where the four corners are. But now all we have left to do is calibrate the projector and that is the link number five, calibrateprojector.sh. Double click on that, run in terminal, it's going to take a base picture and then it's going to provide us with crosshairs that we will use to train the camera and the projector together. All right, to calibrate the projector, we are going to use our calibration disc, which is just a CD that we've covered with paper and poked a hole in the exact center. I'm putting it on a small can. You want something that's about two inches high, maybe three, somewhere in that area. And then we simply align the mark in the center with the crosshairs, and it should turn the circle green. The green does not have to correspond with the top of the disc because the camera and projector are not aligned yet. So it'll be off to the side usually. And the important part is that it turns green. Once it's turned green, we can press the one key and the computer will take the first measurement and move the crosshairs. From this point on, it's just a matter of getting the center of the disc in the center of the crosshairs, pressing the one key, takes its measurement and moves on. We'll do it four times across each row. And there are three rows. If you ever get a situation where the disc does not turn green. It may be that the camera is having a tough time detecting the disc from the bottom of the table. So maybe just get a little taller uh, stand for that particular measurement and then go back to the two or three inch tall stand that you've been using for the rest of the measurements. Now, we're about to do the last measurement on the first pass. And after we take this measurement, the computer is going to project a red crosshair where it thinks the center of the disc is. This happens to be right on, which is great. Sometimes it won't be right on. And now we choose something slightly taller and begin our next calibration round. Now you'll notice that the red crosshair is nowhere near it at this level. It had a pretty good idea when we were down at the two inch level. Now that we've moved up, it doesn't seem to have its bearings, but each measurement we take, it's going to get closer. Time it got exact. But it's off over here. So we'll take another measurement by pressing the one key, and it's even closer. So as we go along, it should continue to get better and better at knowing where the center of the disc is. Now it's starting to know it without us. 
picking a measurement at each point. I'm using an almost empty paper towel roll. And it's the same procedure. Center the dot in the crosshairs, press the one key. Point, it can be pretty well lined up in the millimeter, so it looks like a home stretch here. Well, it's getting good when you can't see the white crosshair behind it. And one more position, everything looks pretty much like we want it to. We have uh, the green is up off the floor. The yellow and other colors are going up from there. We have the blues down below. We hold our hand out. We can get it to generate water. So this table is ready to fill with sand. You can tell you did a good job if it looks pretty square around the edges the, as, as the radiation goes up the walls. And that is the end of the calibration progress. You can now press escape on the keyboard. We can close all of our open windows. And the table is ready to run. Do that by double clicking on startup.sh, selecting run in terminal. And there's the table. Now you'll notice that the green, which is sea level, is at the bottom of the table. This can be adjusted for however much sand you'd like to have in the table by simply going into the sandbox tools folder, opening the box layout text by double clicking and then selecting display. And this number here, the 118.42 is the distance from the camera to the bottom of the table. I'll move that up about five centimeters and select save and now when we restart the table by double clicking on the start of sh and selecting run in terminal you'll notice that the green is now up the wall some we have blue in the bottom of the table and you can adjust that to however much sand you'd like to put in the table you'll notice that the water function is already working and all that's left to do is put some sand in.